we were just in the bathroom, this man and I talking about this. I know it sounds weird, but wherever, <laughs> wherever you meet up to talk, sometimes yeah, yeah. you got to meet up to talk. And he says, yeah. Sway. And I was explaining to him, man, it's a difficult balance doing this show. Right. Mm-hmm. Because some of the messaging you might hear in the music, and then we'll break the mic and try to bring balance in our interviews and so on and so forth. But still, you know, it's a constant fight. And he said, you were built for it. Mm. I said, what do you mean? He said, even Jesus had niggas trying to kill him. Oh, mm-hmm. well, is that a direct quote? That's a direct That was a direct, direct quote. quote. Greetings and welcome back to the exposition. This is episode two of season two. It's our second season. We want to thank you all for the support, for all of the comments and all of the encouragement. We're living in a time where encouragement is a great currency. It's like money to us because there are so many things going against the truth as in the subject that we're going to be talking about today. We're doing a part two. Part this two. is our first time doing this, but there was so much to cover last week. We didn't get to get to it all, and there were some new developments since then. Uh, Indeed. <laughs> I happened to watch another video um, about uh, Kurt Franklin and the interview that he did with Sway in the Morning. So we're going to call this the Straightforward Gospel Part 2. Uh, that video was actually worse <coughs> than the Breakfast Club interview mm. as it pertains to truth and the word. So... Uh, we got to deal with some of this stuff. And the reason we're doing this isn't to pick on anyone. This isn't to pick on Suede. This isn't to pick on Charlemagne. This isn't to pick on Kurt. This isn't to pick on any of these guys. We're doing this because the record needs to be set straight. I mean, it's our responsibility. Amen. Uh, when we see the word mishandled, misused, used for personal uh, gain or, or just used in a way that is not uh, becoming of Christianity, it's our job as uh, uh, students of the word. It's my job as a pastor and a minister to set the record straight, mm-hmm. uh, for especially be an avenue for young people and those that have watched it to actually come and hear the truth about it. So mm-hmm. that's what we're here to do. Uh, so we're going to, uh, well, I'm here actually with Jay Bryan and with Carmina Barnett. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Carmina, what you got? So it seemed like he was kind of reaching. He was reaching for answers in the beginning of his interview. And he stated, mm -hmm, he stated that it gets hard for him sometimes because of the mixed messages, the music he promotes. Mm -hmm. So Kirk then told him he was built for it. Now, is that even possible? You you could tell that Sway actually was searching, like you said, even more so for a real answer yeah. because he wanted to use Kurt as an example for what he should do. Yep. And so he was just kind of putting it to him that way, like, dude, how do I deal with this, playing these messages that I know are negative sometimes yep. and promoting these artists that are singing vile and promoting explicit things? Right. How do I deal with that, yeah. you know, and what people might say about me? Right. And my character. Right. And that's why Kurt used the, you know, the, the phrase even Jesus had folks trying to kill him. In other words, don't, you know, you don't listen to the haters. Right. Basically, because they <laughs> even Jesus had some. Right. You know, and that's kind of what he was trying to say. But there are no answers but the correct answer in my right. book. And when we finesse our way through questions to find a suitable answer, we do a disservice to the cross. Absolutely. And that's that's what we have to make sure we're not finessing our way through stuff so that uh, we can stay where we are in the eyes of people, but we have to make sure we give people the truth mm-hmm. or else the cross is void, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and we know the cross is void, so we have to give something that won't return void. That's right. And that's the word of God. Amen. Uh, Philippians 3 and 18 says, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the, the cross. cross. And I know some people say, well, dude, that's a little, that's a little strong. I can, <laughs> are you trying to say Kurt's an enemy of the cross? Well, you know, uh, Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. You're Mm -hmm. either gathering 
or, or you are scattering. Amen. So gathering would mean that I am saying things the way Christ would say it in order to gain those people. Mm -hmm. Scattering would be me and I'm saying what I want to say mm -hmm. and it doesn't line up with the word. And that's that's pretty much what's happening. But the second scripture that uh, Philippians th uh, 3 and 19 says, their end is destruction and their God is their belly. Mm -hmm. And they glory in their shame, which basically means, you know, and we were talking about it in the back, but every time they open their mouth, they're talking about the sins that they commit. Yep. In other words, you know, you say, hey, brother, how you doing? You know, well, you know, I was a fornicator and I was I was I was sleeping with millions of women for about 20 That's years. Crazy. But, you know, God has. Been, why you got to always bring up your sin, right, dude? Right. Like, I just wanted to know how your day was going. Right. I want to know how you got here <laughs> over the years, you know, but that's what they do. And that's what glorying in your shame is, meaning. Right. I don't really want to stop doing what I'm doing, so I'll just make what I'm doing my crutch and I'll keep promoting it so that it can draw the people that have crutches too. Amen. And that's all it is. And then it says they mind earthly things. And this is, man, this is the crux of this because they always use you know, personal analogies to illustrate the Bible, you right. know, you know, mm -hmm. hey man, I mean, is, is, is God a good God? Man, God is so good. It's like, God's like the love of your wife. <laughs> like he's good, like you know that that's right. that's they do not, that's time. minding earthly things, meaning everything got that like you remind me of my G. Yep. No, I'm just playing. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's go here, Pastor. Let's go here. All right, so and again, this is coming directly from the they gotta recover. recover okay. Cool. <laughs> this is coming directly from the interview, okay? <laughs> Did God intend for the vehicle of religion? to be used as a vehicle to know him better. Does religion birth judgmental people? And should it be totally done away with? So all the way, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> all those things were said in this interview. Right. God yeah. didn't intend the vehicle of religion to be used to know him better. Right. That was stated. That was okay. stated. As if that's, okay. Then does religion, the, the fact that religion births judgmental, judgmental people, people. Yeah. that was stated. Yeah. It does do that. Yeah. And then they also said it should be totally done away with. Kurt totally done that. away. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna do away with religion. Okay, right. okay. I mean it was it was multiple shots taken at the church. Okay. And how bad church people are and how bad the church has become and how bad of a uh, of a of a job the church is doing to you know, as far as you know, I, what they call engaging the culture and we push people. It was just so many shots. Not one shot taken at hip hop though, but we'll get to that. So first of all, let's let's define religion. The Bible defines it, defines it as caring for the needy and being unspotted from the world, mm -hmm. right? In essence, it's being saved and living a holy life as God's word teaches us to. We will err and fall, right? The Bible also says that if, if we say that we are without sin, we're liars, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is why we need Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we will err and fall, but we don't change the rules for the error. We change the error because of the rules, mm. right? So again... We don't change the rules because of the error. <laughs> so we change the error because of the rules. James 1 and 20, 1, 27 says it like this. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. To keep yourself unspotted from the world. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> okay, come on. If, if the scripture is saying to keep yourself unspotted from the world, then why are we using the Bible? This goes back to the philosophy of Kanye West. This is why so many people, even Christians today, flock to him because he wrote the song, well, co-wrote the song, as we later found out, Jesus Walks. They want people, they, they want a God to service them and who they are defined by this world and not serve God how he created them to be in service to him. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. There's no, there's, there is no, according to scripture, there is no religion in existence where you can be spotted or full of the world. You can't have your own ideologies and your own little philosophies and mix it in with what God says is true or, or try to take what God says is a lie or is against him or in opposition of his word and, and still try to straddle that on, in everyday life and call yourself a Christian. You cannot do that. Mm -hmm. The hostess, the host and the hostess that was on the show kept asking Kurt, 
Just, you know, they're asking, man, what, what, what about the sins of the Catholic Church, which we're going to get into? What about smoking weed? What about home? They kept asking them the, the common theme in the, in the narrative of society today, looking for their thirst. They want to know what the truth is. And all he kept on saying is how hurt he was. And his mother adopted him. And his father left him. And an old lady adopted him. His grandma. It, his, like, no, he never answered the question. Yeah. Like, never. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the scripture leads into what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. When we grow up without rules, um, we don't like rules. Person grow up without rules, they don't like rules. Yeah. And if you really look into the religion scripture, and one reason Kurt has such a problem with uh, religion is because one of the uh, qualifications of pure religion is to visit the fatherless. And he's father. He's father. So if you're fatherless mm. and religion didn't handle father, your fatherlessness the right way, Preach. it will put you on the other side of religion yeah. and that will make you hate religion. Religion mm. is deemed pure in this particular, or can be a pure religion. Now we know we got crazy religions, but the biblical religion of Christianity, according to James 1 and 27, mm -hmm. is stated that it is pure. But when we grow up without rules, we don't like rules. This is the problem with Kurt. Many others that are pushed to the forefront without truly healing from their past. So this is, you know, they don't like rules because the lack of rules hurt them mm. or rules abandon them. Yep. So that's why <laughs> rules abandoned you. If your father abandoned you, rules abandoned you. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue here. This is uh, how this generation is... Uh, feels for the most part. This is why so many are plagued with it because we have so many fatherless uh, kids or kids that grew up without fathers and so they hate rules because rules remind them of what they didn't have yep. and rules remind them of what was missing mm -hmm. and that's why in Kurt's situation religion and rules got to be done away oh, with. Yeah. He yep. said I was I'm, I'm raised up to do away with the idea that Christianity requires a lifestyle. Yeah. He said that like you know, uh, people say Christianity should look a certain way or look like a certain lifestyle. I'm here to do away with that. Right. Didn't he state that? He definitely he, stated he, that. He said that. And so that made me wonder, you know, what is wrong with him? Right. And as I begin to, you know, talk to the Lord about it, I begin to go to the word and right here to visit the fatherless. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal because that's what was missing. That's mm -hmm. why here at ABC, we teach men to accept rules and try their best to live up to the standard mm -hmm. because that will stop the hatred of rules. Right. So if we have rules here for the young, for, for men to follow, that begins to make up for what was missing right. in their lives. And they'll begin to fall in love with the idea of someone loving me enough yeah. to uh, keep me from harm or someone loving me enough to protect me from something mm -hmm. that maybe I missed um, or maybe I didn't have growing up, uh, you know, in the home. Um, yeah. Psalms 119.11 says, thy word I hide in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What thy word, thy rules, your rules, the understanding of you, what you require of me, what you want of me, yeah. what I shouldn't be doing, all those things I'm going to hide in my heart so I don't sin against you. Those are rules. Yeah, and, and sadly, it's, it's displayed in the interview. Um, speaking of hiding God's word in your heart, right? The, the, the word is he commanded that we are to honor thy mother and thy father so that our days may be long, right? So that we may live long, right? Any reference to his parents is always a derogatory and negative thing. And then he lifts himself up in comparison. And again, you know, as we stated, it's not to pick on him, but just to, just to show how true the word is. So in, in the context of the, the questioning or the interview, and when he's talking about his parents, specifically his father, because it bothered me personally, right? Your, his reference to his father was, yeah, I had to go visit him in the ghetto, a little raggedy one bedroom apartment. And I had to, because Sway asked him, so how did that, that last meeting, because he brought up the fact that his father was on his deathbed, um, or who, he, who he's telling us is, is his father was on, the, on his deathbed, and that he went, it was the Christian thing to do to go and take care of him. So he goes and he visits his father. He looks at his father and he's telling everybody in the world, you know, I thought I was going to have like the TV show moment where we put our four heads together and he apologized and we have this, you know, he said, but it didn't go like that. I sat down. I, I told him, hey, man, every time, even right now, I swear as I sit in this, in this right now, man, I'm the most insecure man in this room. So my question is, if you're carrying around this baggage, 
Why are you putting yourself in a position? Is that my phone? That might be the case. That's my phone? Okay. Right. Keep, keep talking. Um, all right. <clears throat> if you're carrying around this insecurity, if you have this unhealed area in your life, if you have this unforgiveness in your heart, why are you trying to lead people? Why are you trying to teach, lead, guide, uh, be example for anybody? You, you should go somewhere and let somebody help you in that area to the point where you would exclaim in reference to your father, I hated that nigga, man. He said that several times about his father. So as a Christian, how are you honoring your father in this moment? Be, just because you want to show people that you're doing the best you can because you went to, and his words were, I went to his raggedy one bedroom apartment in the hood somewhere. Like, how is that honoring God, right? If the word is really stored up in your heart. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the fact that he's dealing with these things, and again, the thing, and this is not something we're making up. This is something that can be viewed on, as you state, Pastor, mm -hmm. the world wide web. <laughs> Just how you how you talk about your parents. We've, we've all gone through things or situations where we've been hurt or, or whatever the case in relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. But specifically, the Bible says that we have to honor our mother and our father. That our days may be long. That our days may be long. So that, that's just proof right there that there is an inconsistency even in that. While you're trying to say that the church has failed, the church has failed. I mean, that's, that was said so many and it hurt me because I'm the church. I consider mm -hmm. myself a mm -hmm. part of the church. So that, that in itself, like I said, just contradicts everything that was taking place in that interview. Yeah. Wow. Now you'll hear me keep saying it was stated. And what we've done this time, rather than just regular questions, we just kind of pulled some of the statements from the video okay. and really kind of giving you guys an opportunity to discuss it. So here's another one we want to talk about. Now this was stated again, that religion is something that people have to practice every day like carrying around your marital vows, but relationship is when the vows are written on your heart and you don't have to carry them as long as you're obedient to them. Discuss. So Discuss. how can you obey them mm -hmm. if you don't practice them? Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, 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 do you, how do you do that? You All right. Learn obedience. Every belief system has rules and regulations that must be followed. Every single, every, every single, your every job. Person. You think that if, 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 let's take Sway, the host, right? If Shade 45 and the powers of be of that particular uh, radio station told him not to interview Kirk Franklin, do you think he would be interviewing Kirk Franklin on that radio station? We can ask Arsenio Hall that. I mean, the, the, this is just basic everyday <laughs> principles oh, being applied. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So every belief system, as I was stating, has rules and regulations that must be followed. Right. Kirk dumbs down, he, he, he'll dumb down a Christianity so he can sell these, these albums. But if we take a, a look at 2 Peter 2 and 3, it says, and through covetousness shall they feign words make mer and, and make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. So this is basically describing the position of Kirk Franklin in that moment. He's making merchandise of the people because he's watering down the words of Christ or of the Bible and not giving clarity enough for true conversion to happen for anybody who's actually interested or the possibility of coming to the Lord. And, and as the Bible says, and their damnation slumbers not. So there will be a consequence for it. Yeah, always. At some point. And the consequence now is people just not getting the truth. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the main one. And he, he references marriage, too, as far as being married or have wifed somebody for 23 years or, or whatever he said. But I mean, does a marriage have rules? Absolutely. I mean, even filthy swingers have rules. Yeah. I mean, they have rules. Like you can swing, but you got to swing with me. I mean, I'll, I'll swing. I, we got to swing together. But there's rules. I mean, homosexual uh, unions have rules. Right. I mean, everything has rules. So can you even love a person without rules or regulations? Don't the rules or what you do for that person or what you will not do to that person really show how much you love a person? Yeah. I mean, isn't it all about that? Aren't there boundaries and borders and everything? Mm -hmm. I mean, this young generation is so impressionable because many of them are growing up without rules. And that's why this, you know, that's the main reason we're addressing this because when you, you were created out of a lustful union or whatever, and the mother and father wasn't really feeling each other, didn't really love each other, or didn't, wasn't planning to get together or whatever. You grow up feeling some kind of way about yourself. Right. Should I really be here? 
right? Mm -hmm. So now you're a prime candidate for the enemy to come get in your mind and lead you completely astray. Yep. So we don't need anyone taking a position of authority that's saying it's okay to be astray. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there has to be some rules and regulations that uh, teach us the right way, and we have to be components of that. We have to stand for what is right and the right way of doing things because rules uh, basically allow us to uh, stay on a certain path and even define the path that we're on. Mm -hmm. It can't be defined uh, without rules. Can, can I ask a quick question before we go to the next segment, right? I want to play, play listener's advocate, Pastor. So what I, what I hear ringing really loud in my head is this. Well, it, it's not fair, man, because, you know, in front of those cameras and with that microphone, which Kirk referenced a, a lot, this microphone is very powerful. We got to be careful what we say and how we say. And he, and he even said, I hit my knees before I even did this interview to make sure I came yeah. ready. But playing the listener's advocate, they would say, that's not fair, EX Ministries, because y'all got a chance to, to look at his video, dissect what he supposedly did right or what he did wrong, and now you're doing an expose on what he did wrong. W what would you say to those people who, who, who have that or choose that particular perspective and, the, and, this, and this, instead of hearing what you just said? Look, we're doing this for the, for the young people or even for people alike. That, that are really trying to come to Christ or who are just ignorant to what, what the church is about or who God really is in this day and time. What would you say to those people? Yeah, y'all just, I mean, that's not fair. Y'all had time to break down. He was answering those questions on the whim. On the whim. What would you say to those people? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, if somebody had an issue with what would, I mean, that's what I do. I yeah. mean, I, I think, you know, uh, Paul, I mean, Paul broke down Diana and of Ephesus and the whole, uh, uh, when he talked about uh, sharing a table with those that worship other gods. I mean, he mm -hmm. broke that down explicitly because that's what people were doing. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I think the basis of where we're coming from is the fact that if, if there is no light brought to darkness, then it's the same argument with the rules and regulations. How do we know what's light and what's dark? Gotcha. And uh, I believe that, you know, God has called me to be an authority on these particular things. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important part of this is, you know, I was offered the same stuff. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, gotcha. you were offered the same stuff. Carmina was offered. We were all, Carmina could go and spend R&B next week and, and make some money. Right. You can go rap it. They made you the offers right. all over, right. all over the country. I was offered the same stuff to go and do this or that. And I turned it down because I didn't want to compromise. And I didn't want to put myself in position where I couldn't tell this truth that I'm telling. Amen. There we go. And so because I'm in this position, not to glorify me, right, right, right. but just the fact that I chose something that doesn't, you know, that doesn't lead me to compromise. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a place of authority in that because mm -hmm. I was tested by it mm -hmm. and I turned it down. Gotcha. And I think that's important to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's real important to know because when people get to that level and they are compromising, then the Bible says that they are, po are positioning themselves to lead many astray, especially when you get into that position with a bitter root. Yeah. If you have a bitter root in you, talk about it, which is yeah. when something happened to you, somebody hurt you, somebody did you wrong, mm -hmm. and you're in that position, the Bible said you will defile many. Many, many will be defiled because yeah. you haven't healed it. Mm -hmm. So not only are we doing an expose on it and calling it out or whatever you want to call it, but, you know, you can go to the website and I mean, what, what I got three, four hundred sermons on <laughs> EX Ministries on the mm -hmm. True Church Perspective that can teach you how to not go down that path so you don't have to compromise and sell God out or put yourself in a position mm -hmm. where you have to promote the opposition. Gotcha. That's good. So we got to do this. We got to take a real quick break. This is, of course, the Straightforward Gospel Part 2. We'll be back with more of the exposition.
I mean, these demons and these songs and these folks are trying to take you somewhere. Did Jesus preach about hell? Jesus spoke of hell way more than he spoke of heaven. Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So who goes to hell? Let's see what they were doing that made the earth open up. The Bible said their thoughts were evil, what? Continuously. The first thing they did was they rebelled against God while claiming to be God's chosen people. And then they created their own gods. They went back to their old sins. Finally, they rejected God's prophet and his authority. So for us to do what we want to do with you, we need you to be able to learn evil. That's what this was all about. And so the devil can promote his family, not God's family, the devil's family. These rappers and stuff, they, they rap about it. They sing about it because they want to take your children there. They want to take you there. Oh, there we go, man. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, you know, so, so, and if you notice, if you notice, I never brought up issues of sin and, uh -huh. and wrong and, you know, and condemning people, right. you know, you know what I'm saying? But, but because once again, those are the wrong tools to use in communicating to people God's love and God's grace. God wants to be number one right. in anything in your life. And so we're back and we're talking about more of the straightforward gospel part two. And we're talking about the recent interview with uh, Sway in the Morning. And it's featuring Brother Kirk Franklin. And what we've done is we've been just kind of pulling some of the some of the statements that were made in this film, in this interview, and just kind of discussing them and um, bringing some light to them. We'll say that. Mm -hmm. So here's another one that we want to discuss. Um, God wants us to have a father-son, mother-daughter relationship with Him, but if you are scared of Him, you cannot have a relationship with Him. So. Is this saying that you can't punish those that you love for doing what they shouldn't do? Well, God says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That, that, that's the Bible. So the fear of what is what we need to go into. The fear of disobeying them, right? So yeah. we should keep a healthy fear of breaking the rules. Okay. The reason why we stop at a red light <laughs> is because if the police see us, they're going to pull us over and give us a ticket for running that red light, and then there's a series of consequences depending on how many times you've done that, right? Yes, I have a true. healthy fear of the cop. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is, this is absolutely good for religion, right? Fear is good for religion because, well, let's, let's read the Bible. So Proverbs 9 and 10 states, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy, knowledge of the holy is understanding. So how do we live a holy life? Because God said, be ye holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. If we don't understand what that is, which is why he sent Jesus to model that. Am I, I'm on the same, we're on the same, okay, right? And then how do we do this if we don't have the wisdom to do it? So, so case in point, pastor, I go to ABC. Mm -hmm. I, I find out that I hit some bumps in a row. I try to get a, a meeting schedule with pastor. Hey, pastor, I need to talk to you. Okay, cool, I got some time, let's talk. Pastor, I'm dealing with X, Y, and Z. Okay, I know what you need to do here. Because of his time in the earth, <laughs> because of the, time, the, the times that he's had to bump his head and learn his lessons, mm -hmm. or the times that he was about to bump his head mm -hmm. and didn't because of, of the wisdom that he had, mm -hmm. he's able to share that with me, and then now I can apply that. Then once I do that, now I can apply that to my son or brother in the, in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just the way this goes. Religion has to have a rule so that we can obey the creator of the religion, which in our faith, Christianity, will be God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, who was our Lord. You understand what it just it all makes I, sense. I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes sense, right? It it does make sense. And uh, you know, my father, I mean, I'm five foot nothing. But my father, remember my father coming? Uh -huh. He he my father was six foot two. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
I was scared of it. <laughs> now, I love my father, you know, and I never felt like he didn't love me, you know, but I kept a fear of him because I was scared of what he was going to do right. if I got out of line. I remember one time he said, you know, he said, Craig, you know, to get that water hose and wind that water hose up before you go uh, play basketball at the school because my school was right up the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, you know, when I, I wasn't as scared of him as I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So I didn't wind the hose up. Uh oh. So I walked down there and I was playing basketball with all the friends at school. It was a whole bunch of them out there. And I looked up in the horizon <laughs> and six foot two. <laughs> <laughs> it was a horizon. I had a horizon in my neighborhood, Carmina. Most uh, folks didn't have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I looked and out, out at the horizon. My daddy was standing on the hill. Right. Six foot two, yeah. holding a belt. <clears throat> I'm hooping with my friends at the school. Mm -hmm. My dad walked all the way down that hill. He got taller and taller. Usually when you go down the hill, yeah, he's supposed to shrink. He's, he yeah. got taller and taller. Mm -hmm. By the time he got down to the hill, he was a Nephilim. Yeah. A giant. That was that fear. And, and the belt was <laughs> got the belt got longer and longer. Yeah. He could have probably whipped me from the horizon. Yeah. So anyway, the, the part of the story is he came down and he beat me in front of my friends. Right. <laughs> so after that day, I pretty much did, you know, I had a fear of it. Now, yeah. after that day, we went places together. We, we hung out. He loved on me. I loved on him. Father. But I was still, I, I didn't want the horizon experience again. <laughs> <laughs> so I never stopped loving him. He never stopped loving me, though. He punished me or whatever. Now, Kurt said this. He said, ain't no kid going to run to the front door and greet their father if he's abusing them or mean to them. He said, nobody wants to rock with God if he is going to get you when you get out of line. That's what he said. Now, the Old Testament, God got some folk. Yes, he did. He really did. But this comes from a man that never had a father. Now, the example I just gave made me understand God's love even more mm -hmm. because I had an earthly father to punish me when I did wrong reward me when I did good. That made me understand a heavenly father, but I can understand someone who didn't have that example right. saying these things, and that's why he's saying them. You can't understand the heavenly father if you have never had an earthly one, and that's what's wrong with this generation. That's why their acceptance of Christianity, you know, it's not for us to make it more appealing to them or whatever, but their acceptance comes with a hesitation because they don't understand the love of a heavenly father if they don't understand the love of an earthly father. So if you've never been chastened by a father, then you can't understand the love of a real father. Hebrews 12 and 7 says like this, if you endure chastening, meaning God's whippings, yep. God, if you endure it, God dealeth with you as with sons. Mm -hmm. Then he says, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? I have a question real quick. You said you were playing basketball. You're five foot how much? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so again, we're going back to the interview. Another thing that was brought up was speaking of the issues of the Catholic Church, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was stated that when you are a part of an organization, hear me out now, that dehumanizes people, mm -hmm. disenfranchises people, or demeans people, you are continuing to pass on the sickness. Please discuss that. <laughs> so, hip-hop then, hip-hop a few, few years ago, and hip-hop now still does what? It disenfranchises people. Uh -huh. Dehumanizes. Dehumanizes people. And demeans. And demeans people. It's still talking about sex outside of marriage. It's still talking about murder. It's still talking about drugs, which has probably been the most popular theme in the last five to eight years, all of the music is drug infused because all of these children dealing with the deficit of fatherlessness are drugging themselves to deal with that deficit, right? Mm -hmm. So doesn't, doesn't the hip hop community and even the radio station that Kurt and them on, what, don't, they, don't they play that same music that does all of that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Okay, so if you're on a radio station that's playing the explicit music, how do you voice a concern for that? 
and, and chastising the church or the approach of the church and not even deal with the elephant that's in the room. Mm. You're in the circus, but you're talking about what's going on outside of the circus. Right. That, that doesn't make any sense. First, that's only 5 and 22, 5 and 22 states abstain from all appearances of evil. So, okay, the church conversation can be had, but it should be dealt with from the, the, the authorities that God has placed within the church. That's not the conversation. The conversation should be from a person that's representing the church mm -hmm. on a platform such as a secular forum or a secular platform should be, hey, wait a minute, the music that you're playing before I got to this radio station, the music you're gonna play after I leave this radio station, <laughs> Is aiding and abetting background. in this crime that, or this sickness Playing right that, now. That, you, right, you that? that we're trying to call out right now. Like that's that's yeah. what the issue is yeah. currently in our society. Yeah, and, and to, to 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 say that you should, uh, I, I mean, if you're a part of the Catholic Church, you are continuing to pass the sickness on. Right. But you're a part of the music industry. You do award shows where they you know, promote women's bodies and just all kinds of debauchery. And, but you'll continue to do that because that probably pays well. Right. Uh, and, you know, if, if as soon as they asked him about the Catholic Church, his first response should have been, the Catholic Church is a false religion. Yes, it is. You know, that should have been stated first. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, you know, for the record, the, uh, the Catholic Church is not Christianity. And Christianity is not Catholicism. They are not one and the same. Not at all. The Catholic Church is anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is against Christ. Christ said, call no man father. They named the priest father. father. Christ said, uh, <laughs> when you're fasting, uh, don't mess with your face. They put ashes on their face and mess with their face. I mean, absolutely everything the Bible says, <laughs> all the rules of the Bible, they actually go straight up against them. So they are anti-Christ. So we don't believe in Catholicism. That should have been mentioned First, right. but like I was telling y'all in the back, when you are part of the Illuminati or you're a part of the Baphomet agenda or the one world mindset, there's certain things you can never say. And one of them is you can never go against the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because the Catholic Church is, is, is placed or poised to be the final religion that we will see uh, before Jesus comes. I know it don't look like that here in America because it's not as many, but everywhere else, come on now. Yeah. The Vatican is 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 it. Yeah. So we know that, and I've talked about it in my videos and different things a lot, but that should have been stated first. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, but because of his agenda or because of the powers that be that he, he serves, mm -hmm. he can't make that statement, so he has to take you know, a different uh, approach to it. But Galatians 1 and 9 says, as, he, as I said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you mm -hmm. other than that which you have received, let that man be accursed. So we're talking about the gospel of Jesus having to be, pre um, not being preached, uh, but, but taught in a different way so that it appeals to sales and uh, that, that just basically brings a curse upon So you. speaking of, right, because you, you also posed this in the back when we were talking earlier. So without, without religion, how do we know where to draw the line, mm -hmm. right? And then we, we made mention of the DJ that's on the show as well. So mm -hmm. it's a host, two assistant hosts, and then it's an actual DJ. Mm -hmm. So the DJ had the opportunity to ask her a question because they, act, they asked a question um, re, and refer to the video if you want. Kurt gave this long answer. And the DJ say, you know, I appreciate the long answer, but... It sounded like you were trying to say something, but you but you kind of scared to say it. Mm -hmm. He said, dealing with millennials and these young kids today, man, we got to tell them what's right. And then we got to tell them what's wrong. We can't go around or beat around the bush when it comes to this. He was like, so why don't you just do that? Yeah. The DJ. The DJ. The, the non-believing DJ <laughs> said, hey, man, if this is what you believe and you feel like this is going to right the wrongs or, or produce a truth, why can't you just adamantly speak that and be okay with what, whatever that comes after that? So then let me ask this question. <laughs> Crazy. Should we teach right or wrong? You know, we grow up as little kids learning what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But it was stated that when we speak, we should not speak as an oracle of God or discuss right or wrong. So first of all, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> this was the most, let me say this, this is the hardest to watch video yeah. I've ever watched. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for him, then I didn't like him, then I prayed for him, then I, I mean, it was so hard <laughs> to watch this guy not say stuff. Yeah. You know how it make you nervous when you watching somebody do that? Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, 
Yep. Like when he was talking, oh, oh. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. it's like he just wouldn't say stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thank God yeah. Yeah. that I, I, I can say, thank God I'm an oracle. Amen. Ahead, <laughs> so, so let's, okay, so, all right. So, <laughs> right and wrong work. So, is it, is it teaching if the difference of right and wrong is not stress? How, what are you learning if I don't tell you what's right about whatever we're talking about and what's wrong about whatever we're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to school and they, don't, and they don't give or tell me that my answers, whether they're wrong or, or right, did I learn anything? So James 4 and 17, I love the Bible. Wait, before you do that, I just pictured something when you said that. Could you imagine the teacher <laughs> passing out your test after you took it All right. and there's no marks on it and right. you get excited and you let like, the teacher say, <laughs> nah, I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know if it's right yeah, or wrong. Let's right. not deal with that. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, go ahead. Right, right, no, because that's, that's what they kept saying. Well, that's what Kirk said. He was, well, let's not even deal with right and wrong. Let's not deal with sin. That's exactly what he said. But this is what the Bible says, James 4 and 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So it's worse, and that scenario is worse for Kurt than it is for the people who are supposedly mm -hmm. listening to him because he knows the right and the wrong. Mm -hmm. Not saying it for him is sin. Yeah. So why, not talking against sin or, or trying to make the difference between what is sin and what isn't sin, he's sinning in the process of not doing that. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I, and, 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 and then when he said, you know, we shouldn't speak as an oracle of God, like we're an oracle of God. Uh, every prophet of God is an oracle of God. Ain't that what the word oracle means? But you've been watching The Matrix. Too, uh, right? See, you watching The Matrix and saw that lady with the hair that liked the candy yeah. and thought something was wrong with being an oracle. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, ain't nothing wrong with being an oracle. That's an actual prophet of God. As long as you're an oracle of God, that's yeah. the good thing. Right. When we speak... We better be speaking as an oracle or authority of God or else we are only promoting ourselves and what we feel. Mm, mm, mm. I, I mean, I have to speak what God says. Yeah. That makes me an oracle of God. Yeah. If I'm speaking how I feel, then I'm a false prophet. Yeah. Amen. Kurt is speaking what he feels because he was never taught how to stick to what God says in spite of how you feel or what you need at the time. And that's something that fathers teach, and that's something we teach here, and we teach the men to teach. The father is the one that builds the boundaries, that sets up the perimeters. Mm -hmm. That's the father. He right. teaches you when you get around these people, man, you, you respect your mama, you respect me, you respect our house. When you get around a certain group, you can't do what everybody do because you have to behave a certain way. I mean, even, uh, God rest his soul, uh, John Singleton, put that in his movie he where the did. boy was riding in the let me out. He couldn't do what the other folks did. <laughs> he couldn't go where the other ones went because he yep. had his daddy telling him, brother, these are your perimeters. Yep. The others don't have these boundaries, but these are your boundaries. Yeah. And that's very, very important. I know I'm, you know, being comical a little bit, but this is a serious topic, man, because this is what's affecting this generation. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing this show, because fatherlessness is the root of all of this. Mm -hmm. And if you take a guy like Kanye West or Kurt Franklin, these guys are pot pipers, like I said in my video. Yeah. So the kids hear them, feel them, and want to follow them because they all have something missing. Yep. Scripture tells us in Colossians 3 and 21, fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Okay, discouraged, what is that word saying? Discouraged about what? Discouraged from taking a stand. Yeah. They'll be discouraged from taking a stand and instead please people. Mm -hmm. So is this generation needing to see before they hear? That's yeah. another statement. Yeah, that, yeah. Now, is that meaning we have to do things to make the gospel more attractive to them so they'll want Christ? No. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it does not. We, we can't make the gospel appealing uh, by watering it down and then spiking it. <laughs> we can't do that. He's, Kirk said on the show, you know, we dealing with a generation, man. They, they want to see it, man. These cats want to see it before they hear it. And the Bible says that the opposite way. <laughs> the 
I, I mean, the Bible says the very opposite. I mean, <laughs> faith comes by. All right, so we cannot make the gospel appealing, as I said, by, by, by watering it down and then spiking it. Their hearts do have to be open to it. And he tried to go down this, this, this path, but then he backstepped a few times. But if we take a look at John 20 and 29, it says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, speaking of Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Believed. The, the epitome of what we are as Christians are believing without seeing. The Bible says that it's impossible to, to please God without faith because we don't see him. That's we right. have to believe that he is. That's right. So how can we say that we're trying to appeal to a generation that want to see before they hear if we're our religion, our Christianity says that we have. Somebody has to be sent. I'm the done. word also said <laughs> you done. Yeah, I do. I do use go tap, uh, tap out. It's sooner or later because he, he was pretty high strong on this one <laughs> but it's true though it got it got me riled up like that too because it was sad to see yeah. it, was, it was really sad to see uh i feel sorry for him i feel sorry for sway and the secular people even more so because they they just didn't get the gospel like it should have been it should have been brought yeah, to him because i mean because he told he told them especially in reference when he was talking about the Catholic Church and all that. He, he, Kirk, he said, "Man, we don't, we don't need the mass. We don't need the church. You ain't got to go nowhere." Yeah, he said that. Man, God'll come to you while you on the toilet. He Man, you can have church at the stop sign. So just do away with, with, with just. Well, y'all pray for Jay because he. <laughs> this bothered him. <laughs> you gonna have church at the stop sign, fam? <laughs> stop sign church. Man, that just sounds good. And um, it sounds good, so it, it gets said. But it, it, let me let me close this out because um, and we're gonna put you get your bre blood pressure cut. Thank you. All right, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> this is um, you know this is another attack on religion. And me as a pastor, I understand this attack a little better because I went through my period of hating the church or being upset with the church because I felt there were things that weren't taught to me or whatever. And then as I matured, I began to learn that God built the church and the church is his. And just because some men may have done you wrong or some men may not have been fair, it doesn't mess up the church or God's plan. So what God did, he spoke to me and told me, I'm gonna show you my plan and I want you to fulfill it. And I want you to walk it out. And so get rid of your anger, get rid of your hate i mean come here remember uh, she she remember that uh, you know I, I i grew my hair out and had dreads remember that i was rocking the hair oh you don't remember that you never saw me i don't think i went nowhere but you know i did i grew my hair out and i was just i was in total rebellion my daddy said you can't come over here ever with your hair like that <laughs> so you know it, it didn't last long <laughs> but um <laughs> But I grew it out in rebellion because I felt that, you know, I felt the church. I felt the church hurt and I was I had to get delivered from it before God would allow me to get before his people. And he told me, say, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do it the right way. I'm going to show you the way to do it. And you try your best as a human in your humanness to line up with it. And that's what I've done. So. I don't like when people take shots or try to speak for the totality of the church or consider themselves, oh, the church has done this and our oh, religion has done this or whatever. None of us are that big, okay? Mm -hmm. So none of us can speak for that. All we can do is take the little bit or take what God has given us and handle it the best way it can be handled. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's missing here. This is a mishandling of the word. So let me set the record straight a little bit and then we're gonna close this. but. Religion is a good thing, just like rules and re regulations in any walk of life guide us and keep us within the perimeters of whatever it is we are trying to possess. That's what rules do. Mm -hmm. What Kurt wants to do, uh, the further he goes into the music industry, is silence the words that condemn his decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's all this is. So many, like Kanye West and others, want justification for the bad decisions they've made. They got the fame by selling their soul and they sold their stand for God. Uh, so they can, uh, so they have to change God to match their decisions so they can have peace in their decision. And that's all it is. The truth interrupts their peace because they know they compromise to get what they have. Yeah. 
if you change the rules of a game while the game is being played, you can always win. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they are doing. The sad part is that it's leading a nation of children astray and the blood will be required on their hands. They use God for his platform and try to silence God's oracles or voices that are speaking truth. They live a life of compromise and low self-worth because they sold God for riches and fame. We must know the word so that we are not lured into their selfish emotional movements that cater to their fallen state. Mm -hmm. We must continue to serve God without compromise so that we can truly be followers of God. The word tells us in Jude 10, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast in those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves, uh, uh, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. They are wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. <laughs>